I went in the first day before that boat stop and I sat right across the middle of the I said, I don't care. I can get you out of it if you're not going to get another chance. You better serve up God. And we're going to ride his back. Ride his back. Gonna get him out of here. Better. I'm gonna pull one back to says Earl. <laughs> WBCQ, Monticello, Maine, USA. You've been belling about it. <laughs> oh, God never answers no. Come on, he answers yes. Is God going to bless his people? Yes. Is God going to take us through this end time? Yes. Is God going to keep us when the world's on fire? Sure, yes. Hallelujah. Somebody say it, man. Oh, hallelujah. I just can't hardly wait. I wish it would come to the end tomorrow. I wish it would come tomorrow. Huh? Somebody says, brother, say, what are you going to do when the money collapses? Wonderful. You know, I have a book in my library, a man by the name of George Mueller. Probably one of the most powerful men of faith the world ever seen. He wasn't a preacher. He just had a great love for children. He started taking in little urchins off the streets in London. It wasn't long that George Mueller had 2,000 orphans in his orphan home. Never one time did he ever ask anybody for one single dime. One of the most remarkable stories is told about him one day. They woke up and the cook came and said, Brother Mueller, we haven't got anything for, food for breakfast. The boys would have all the children go into their place and bow their head and thank the Lord for the breakfast. No milk, no eggs, no cereal, nothing. He said, well, I don't tell the children, just come and go in and bow their heads at the table. Thank God for the breakfast. And he went into his little old prayer room. And there he was praying. He said, God, I can't see these 2,000 children, but you can. About that time. Mr. Mueller! Yeah? There's a, there's a bread truck that just pulled up out here. It's day old bread, and they don't, they don't, they don't want it. They want to know if you want it. Just put it on the table. Went back to praying. Mr. Mueller, the little bread truck out here, they had an accident, the milk spilled on the street, and they haven't got enough time to take it to where they're taking it, and they want to give it to you. He said, get it out of the street and put it on the table. Before <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got done, they had eggs come by, they had potatoes come by, they had, they had, they had bacon come by, come on, have a full-fledged breakfast. Oh, hallelujah. I can't hardly wait to see how God's going to feed us when the world's on fire. Somebody say amen. Somebody said, my brother said, you're storing up food. Yes, I am. When I'm down to my last jar of carrots, you watch the Lord give me a full meal. You know, I remember, remember the Lord told me just the other day, I got this. You know, I haven't, this is, you, you probably don't even know why. That was new to me when I mentioned how, how Jesus fed the multitude, but he fed them because somebody had some. Remember, 5,000 had nothing to eat, and they said, Lord, let's send them away. And he says, you feed them. And, and, and then he asked this question, what have you got? Suppose that little boy wouldn't have had the five loaves and two fishes. Then suppose that little boy says, I don't need to take nothing out there. He's a miracle worker. He'll feed me. But somehow that little boy says, well, I'm just going to take along these five loaves and two fishes in case he don't prove. In the meantime, he got converted and said, sure, you can have anything I got, sir.